Hello, this is Grandmaster Herbert M. Ware with Mount Tabor Grand Lodge. Thank you for tuning in once again. I want to thank all of the subscribers. I want to thank the many, many viewers of our videos. And I do ask again, please tell a friend, whether they're Masons or uh, Eastern Stars or not. These videos are for the edification of all. Uh, now, this video, which is what I believe to be true, when it comes to the Christian faith and masonry, might ruffle some feathers. I do welcome your comments and your communications. Contact me, uh, our information is on YouTube, and uh, visit our website. If you would like an, a printed copy of this video, contact me, I'll get that to you. Now, I will say that just as in the Lodge and Chapters, if you choose to glean and understand what I'm gonna be saying, uh, if you want to become mature in your Christian walk, in the lodge, and in life also, you will need a Bible, a good study, bi uh, study Bible, preferably. As my pa uh, pastor says, you need to read it for yourself. Don't always look for somebody and listen for somebody to tell you everything. Uh, read it for yourself because Masons and Eastern Stars are supposed to be thinkers, doers, and not just followers. After all, one day we're going to have to stand alone. Visit our video dated 9718 on the law of the mind. Now, you know, things are changing. Things change is happening. The world is crying out for godly men, for men that live by principles and precepts, those of God, uh, men that have knowledge of and wisdom to do what is good. Let me say the world is in perfect order. All that God created is good and God created everything. Everything works perfectly until you add people. So I ask you to become a part of this movement to right a wrong and to clarify a misunderstanding. Back on February 2nd, 2018, our video talked about the Bible and masonry. It was soft-spoken and diplomatic, I thought so. But now I want to, want to address the uninformed and misinformed notions about what they say masonry is. You know, people, the populace, are always quick to say they say. If you remember in the Bible, Moses sent 12 uh, scouts to the promised land to check it out and see whether or not it was all that it was supposed to be. All but two came back in Numbers 14, uh, verses six and eight. All but two came back and said, we can't, we shouldn't, it's impossible. They're big as giants. So they said it was no good. It was not a good thing to do. At the end of this video, we're going to look at the structure of the Christian faith and the structure of the lodge and determine if what they say is true or just spoutings of misunderstandings, misinformed and uninformed, uninformed. They are Masons all across the earth, in all corners of the earth and in all major religions. Every Mason makes a solemn declaration that he believes in the existence of one ever living God, in the immortality of the soul, and that he is looking for everlasting life. Now, this is good because it allows Masons to fellowship and meet uh, men that under any other circumstances, they would be at odds with one another. This is called tolerance, according to Ephesians 4 and 2. Each lodge now has a book of worship, or as we call it, volume of sacred law. Every Mason, every lodge, every jurisdiction are to govern themselves by their volume of sacred law and the tenets and virtues of masonry. So with their volume of sacred law being the final word. Now, I'm not going to attempt to, to uh, talk or speak for all Masonic lodges across the world, but the Masons and lodges that sit in uh, lodges and use the 66 books of the Bible, the Holy Bible, as their book of reference, their book of worship, and their VSL, and their work and life, I can talk on those. Everything comes 
from somewhere or something. Biblical scripture is the seed in the Christian lodge, lodges that place the Holy Bible on their altar. It's the seed to produce spiritual temples not made with hands. And those temples are to be dedicated to the service of God. So every Christian mason, lodge, and jurisdiction is to promote and practice the same tenets and virtues regardless of ethnicity, religion, or denomination. Every mason, lodge, or jurisdiction is to act according to 1 Corinthians 12, verses 12 through 14, towards their fellow man, because the body of Christ is not one member, but many. Both the Bible and masonry promotes and requires that there be a relationship with God, a relationship with his word. The Bible is a relationship book. It was not written or designed to make sense. With masonry, a relationship with men based on God's word. Masonry is a relationship-oriented book. Now, the Bible is called the great light of masonry. The open Bible symbolizes the lodge is not in darkness, but working by the light of its sacred law. It is the crowning glory of Freemasonry that the open Bible is ever found on the altar when the lodge is at labor. On the, on the Bible, the obligation is taken. The obligation, which you told right off the bat, is not to interfere with any obligations to your God, country, and family. That's where you take your obligations. And the Bible also, in uh, the language of the Bible, influences Masonic ritual. In, an, in our old Masonic lectures, we're told that the volume of sacred law unfolded and opened, makes the lodge just. So the Bible remains to be masonry's greatest treasure. The number one aim of masonry is to follow the Bible in preparing oneself to be an instrument of God for the good and the beautiful. Number two, we find all the moral, ethics, and truths for which masonry stands in the Bible. The Bible upon the altar points the way to God and teaches us to worship him in spirit and in truth, as in John 4, verses 23 and 24. And then as with the Bible, Masonic teachings, the objectives are to get man to obtain, maintain, and share the spirit of God. Number five, as far as being our treasurer, both the Bible and masonry have the same purpose, and that is to bring man from darkness to light that he may see and know God. Now, items four and five cannot come true. They're not going to work unless you are attending a good Bible, a good uh, uh, Bible teaching church. And when I say attending, I mean more than Palm Sunday and St. John's Day. Also, you need to be reading and studying for yourself. You know, Masons adopted the Bible as the great light because there's no other book so full of wisdom of life, so no other book so enlightening to the soul and beneficial when we are caught up in the trials and tribulations of life here on earth. In other words, the Bible is a Masonic landmark. English Freemasonry is founded on the Bible, on the Holy Bible. The Bible gives us our duty to God, which supersedes any and all earthly duties. Therefore, it is imperative that a Mason or an Eastern star study the Bible along with their ritual, or they're not going to understand the ritual. You see, the spirit and teachings of the Holy Bible permeates the lodge and all its work. So we are to heed instructions given to us in 1 Peter chapter 1, verses 13 through 16. We need to keep us a sober spirit, fix our hope, do not conform, and be holy in all our endeavors. So 
Understanding who we are, we are to pray according to John 15, 16, especially if you wish to be fruitful. The Bible states that the provisions of God are there to, are, were created and provided to, to give us peace, power, and prosperity. So you cannot be in Jesus' name in the church and in something else elsewhere. Masons and uh, Eastern stars are to be the same no matter where they are. If you are not being taught Bible, scripture, along with your Masonic ritual or your Masonic lessons, you're in the wrong place, the wrong larger chapter. If you, if in your larger chapter, you're not being taught how to live, how to live by every word of God, then you're not being taught right. You will be caught up in the ebbs and flow of life to destruction. Visit our video, January 19th, uh, 2018, about the enemy's perfect plan. Now, the Bible, <laughs> the, the Bible is the word of God, and it is designated to do two things, to protect and provide. True members of the Masonic Order should enjoy both because they are taught and practice and hopefully perfect biblical principles and precepts within the large setting, which is to transcend outside the large setting into your home, church, and community. Now, looking at the structure, the church we have, the Christian faith, we have God, Jesus, and Holy Spirit. At the center of that uh, uh, structure is the Word of God. We are to build spiritual temples and we are nothing we do or say is to conflict with the word of God. Colossians chapter two, verses six through 10. Now, when we look at the lodge, we have the worshipful master, senior warden, junior warden. No, I am not saying they represent God, Jesus, and the Holy Spirit. I'm simply saying they are the leaders of the lodge. But on the altar, and that's the point, on the altar is the Bible, the volume of sacred law. The, uh, the, the, that's what we focus on. And we're to build spiritual temples. Again, nothing said or done is to be in conflict with Colossians 2, verses 6 through 10. So the Christian Masonic Lodge is to echo the teachings of the Christian faith and our Holy Trinity. Everyone in the Lodge is to be of the same spirit and the same religious faith. I'm not saying denomination, I'm saying faith. Anything with two heads is a freak, and you can't serve two masters. Only one will have the final word, and that one will be your God. So I'm, t I'm saying to you that I believe to be true that Mason, masonry follows, teaches, and provides a perfect place to perfect your Christian walk. If you take a look at our video, March 9, uh, 2018, a true Mason should be a better church member. There's no such thing as being a Christian or a Mason. I'm reminded of ads I see on TV about the Christian trial lawyers. I'm saying you can be a Christian anything as long as you live by the fruit of the Holy Spirit. Pastors and preachers should know this. They should seek Masons and Eastern stars to be members of the church because Masons and Eastern stars know order and they know how to serve. Am I a preacher? No. Am I a, uh, a Christian? Yes. Am I a Mason? Yes. So folks, this is the movement to place free Mason, Masonry in its rightful place as a handmaiden to the Bible in building spiritual temples, godly men and women who walk in truth. Not because the Bible needs help, but the natural man needs help to see it, to see the light. So if you would like to be more involved with Mount Tabor Grand Lodge and its teachings, study and help us correct the wrong and inform, the miss and uninform. Visit our website, email us, check us out on Facebook, uh, Messenger Me. I do appreciate your time and your attention. 
and your donations to further this cause are welcome. Thank you.